I am so very excited for this video. I have been compiling so much footage since I think like the spring and the summer and the fall of all the baby clothes that I've been making and I'm so excited to show you guys and share with you all the fun designs and experiments that I've been making to create some really beautiful onesies and yarn for my baby blanket. And I apologize if it's loud from the rain. Uh, it's a crazy rainstorm out right now. It's actually been raining for the last four days and I've been kind of waiting for a good pocket to film this video so it's not too loud, but it's just gonna keep raining for the next like four or five days. And I really wanted to get this video out for you guys. So hopefully it's not too loud. Um, the wind is blowing like crazy and the rain is another level. like a baby clothes haul. I think that's what people call these videos, but also I'm gonna show you guys all the clothes that I've been making. I don't have a whole lot of baby clothes that I've bought in. I've gotten some stuff, so I wanted to show you, but I'm not buying a whole lot of clothes right now because I'm still in my second trimester. I'm also making a bunch of my own onesies, and then we also don't know the sex of the baby, so surprisingly a lot of gender neutral clothes out there, which is really nice, but I don't need a whole heaping bunch of clothes right now. I can wait until the baby's born. You know, the baby can just wear some newborns and um, onesies that I make. So I'll probably, you know, purchase more clothes third trimester when I'm more settled in the location of where we're giving birth. Um, I'm also having a baby shower. So let me just show you some of the stuff I have and then dive right into all the clothes that I've been making. Jake and I try really hard to only wear natural fibers on our body. Uh, that being cotton, hemp, bamboo, linen, I think that's all of them. <laughs> um, possibly wool, kind of depending on the situation and um, how it was um, sustainably harvested. So we're doing the same for our baby. We don't want to put polyester or the man-made material on our baby's skin because if you think about it, it's plastic. So you're pretty much just putting plastic on your newborn or your baby's skin and getting those oils on them and their skin can't breathe. So we're really pushing hard to only do 100% um, natural materials, which is easy for baby clothes, but it's also kind of challenging, um, especially, you know, having a baby shower and trying to tell your family, this is what we believe in and I'm sorry if it's annoying. And I know you wanna just go out and buy everything that looks cute, but you really have to look at the, the labels. So all the stuff that I have found um, it's mostly 100% organic cotton. Some of it is hemp, but they're also adorable. <laughs> so I'm not sure how other baby haul videos are done. I'll just show you, but baby clothes are so adorable and I cannot wait, I cannot wait to dress our baby up. Put uh, him or her in these clothes. These just have um, really cute sailboats on them. If the camera can get that up, how adorable. Found these really cool yellow pants. <laughs> They're so cute. And this is just a really pretty blue um, pajamas that has the open bottom here and then it just buttons up. I really liked the blue, That's something simple. The weather is just so crazy. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's insane. It's really nice here by the fire. We got this as um, a gift, these cute, like forest green pants with this cute matching top and of course the little hat. How cute is that? I thought this was super adorable and I could not not get it. I think I got this in my first trimester. I was like, I know it's a little too soon, but <laughs> um, I think these are just called like sleepers. It has the open bottoms. Um, it has trees on them, which I mean, I could not not get this. It's really cute and then i also like how it has built-in mittens so you can fold it over over their fingers you know they don't scratch their face and stuff so that was really cute so this was the first thing i ever bought if you guys watched my pregnancy announcement video this was the first thing i ever bought before i even found out i was pregnant 
Actually, I think I bought this the day I found out I was pregnant with my sister in Seattle. Um, it has a dandelion on it, which is really cute. <laughs> it was kind of like a sign or something. Like I bought, I seen it. It was really cute, and then took a pregnancy test and pregnant. This was adorable too. It has a whole bunch of uh, forest creatures on it, deers and foxes and bears and trees and leaves. Um, it has a zipper at the bottom, which opens up. How cute. So cute. It's, I love all this baby stuff. <laughs> and another little pajama set, which this one is really cool because when I bought it, I didn't know that this was the case, but you can have it just be one big open hole or you can button it, make two pants. Uh, and this has the whales on it. Jake loves whales, so when I saw this, I was like, oh, I've got to get this as well. So living up here in a very remote area, you know, it's kind of hard to go shopping or find clothes. Also, the nearest town that is close to us, which is like 40 minutes away, doesn't have a whole lot of options for, you know, eco-friendly organic clothes. So I order a lot of my clothes from Etsy. Uh, so I just really like Etsy a lot. I think this is where I ordered this dress. Um, which I chose to wear this dress to bring a little bit of sunshine <laughs> in such a gloomy, rainy day. But I also found this, which it says, Future Mushroom Hunter. And if you guys follow the Jake and Nicole show, you know that we are obsessed with finding and hunting mushrooms and eating them. So I thought this was like adorable. So I found this on Etsy um, and I couldn't resist. I also found these on Etsy, which I've shown these on a previous video. And then I also did our baby announcement with them. They're just the, the cute little crocheted work boots that I found. <laughs> They're just so adorable um, to match Jake and I's work boots. So honestly, that's all the baby clothes that I've gotten so far. And then I've gotten two baby swaddles. This one has whales on it. When I told Jake that I was pregnant, um, I had this in kind of the basket with the pregnancy test. And then this one I found has like flowers and butterflies, some mushrooms. Uh, with some bees and grasshoppers and, and stuff like that on it. So I, just, I haven't opened it yet, but it's just another swaddle. Honestly, that's it. I have gotten a couple of books. Uh, I love children's books. I think they're adorable. So I've found some that are really cute. Let me grab them so I can show you. So I got this book, which is so stinking cute, and I'm so excited I found it. I actually found it in the town that's closest to us. They have like a little bookstore. Anyway, so it's Tales of the Mushroom Folk, and oh my god, is it adorable. So it's just like a bunch of different varieties of mushrooms, and actually there are mushrooms in here that we go and find. Um, some we eat, some we don't, but it has like cute little stories of the mushroom people and um, it's just super cute. And then this one I've had for a really long time. It's called Hug Time. Um, it's old, it's kind of been damaged. It's just about this little cat that wants to hug everybody in the world. <laughs> and it's just really cute. So it goes on this journey to hug everybody, all the animals and everything. So that's it for my baby haul of baby clothes that I've bought in. Okay, so now on to my favorite baby clothes. And those are the onesies that I've been hand dyeing with the nature around me and food scraps that we would normally compost that I've been just making into some beautiful colors. I've been doing natural dyeing for about three years now and I absolutely love it so much. The first dye bath I ever did was with avocado skins and pits. No, I'm sorry. Actually, the first dye bath I ever did was with hemlock bark. A good friend kind of slowly introduced me to natural dyes, um, Elaine. So thank you, because it's just been such an amazing journey and I'm learning so much and I'll always be learning with dyeing. I'm gonna experiment. Sometimes I'll throw stuff together and I'm like, I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but it turns out really awesome or it turns out like, ooh, I didn't really like that. Let's put it in a different dye bath and alter the color. I kind of feel like a scientist because you're mixing things and testing the pH of things and adding iron water to make it a different color and it's just been so 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 much fun and if you are the slightest bit interested in dying with nature and with plants and food scraps and stuff do it because it is so so much fun so what i've been doing is i'll just buy a bunch of just plain white 100 percent organic cotton onesies 
like this one so this is just a plain white onesie it is quite the process to get the colors you have to be patient I've made a couple of videos on here about dyeing, but you have to be patient. It doesn't happen in one day. If you, it can, but if you really want good results, it takes a couple of days to, to dye, um, especially if you're doing plant fibers. So I'm doing plant fibers of just cotton. So there's like a whole section for just dyeing plant fibers because you have to mix it with a protein to help the color stick to it. But if you're dyeing with the other fibers like animal fibers, uh, such as like wool and silk, you don't have to like pre-mordant your fibers versus this, there's no, since it's just cotton, there's no protein in it. So I have to pre-soak this, all of my fabrics in soy milk. Um, and that takes a couple of days, you know, if you wanna do a couple of baths over and over again to really get you know, that soy into the fibers to have a better color. So that takes time. And then also making the dye bath takes time. You know, you're making a very strong potent tea. You're mixing the colors, like if you like the way it looks, you know, or if you want it to be darker, you wait a little bit longer. There's just a lot to it. Using an aluminum pot to also help bring out um, the colors to help them stick to the fiber. It's just a lot to learn and it can be overwhelming, but just take baby steps. Um, that's what I did and you know I'm still very very new to it I'm still trying to figure it out I mean I've just been creating some very beautiful colors here's just kind of a quick overlook of what I've been making I mean so pretty <laughs> and then you can also you know do like a cool tie-dye effect where you rubber band them off or you fold them in a certain way and tie them off yeah so and if you guys have watched my previous videos, you know that I'm also dyeing yarn because I'm making my own baby blanket. So when I put a baby onesie in a dye pot, I also dye some yarn with it as well. I really hope the camera can pick up some of the colors and how it looks, because uh, looking at it on the screen or on my little, <laughs> the little flip screen, it doesn't look as purple, but this is actually really purple um, and it has some hints of blue. So this was with purple cabbage. This is purple cabbage with iron water. So iron water is just rust water. I have a jar with old nails in it and the jar just sits there in water doing its thing. You let it sit for a couple of months or however long. And if you wanna manipulate the color of your dye, you can add some of that iron water into a bowl and let the fibers sit in the iron water and actually makes kind of a different color. As you can see here, this one looks different than this one. This one's a pretty light purple, but using the iron water, it made it more of a dark purple. And then we have a chrysanthemum that made a very beautiful yellow, which I was very surprised. I thought it was gonna be more of an orange, um, but it actually turned out very yellow. We have some wolfberry, which made it very purple. I feel like I'm yelling. Uh, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but the rain is just hitting the yurt so hard, so loud. So I apologize, I'm really sorry. <laughs> Here we have salalberry with beets with iron water. So this one I really had fun and experimented with some colors and they're just little footsie pajamas. Um, the color is really cool. It has like blue and purple in it with some white, the white that's shown through. So it looks very tie-dye-y. Here we have turmeric. I think all of these ones are turmeric. That one's very yellow. And the last one is really cool. Looks like a little ray of sunshine on there. I just did this one recently. This one is oolong tea or black tea. It just looks like a forest brown um, and it smells really good. It smells like tea. <laughs> I love how this one turned out. It looks very earth tony. It's just, it's, it turned out really, really nice. I did two of the black tea or the oolong tea. And if you're new to dyeing, honestly, the first 
dye that I would recommend is tea. Go out and get green tea might be a little too light. Some people do get some color with green tea, but black tea is the way to go. Oolong tea. And then you can start branching off from there. You could do flowers, you could do hibiscus, chrysanthemums. There's just so much you can do. So I've dyed with hemlock bark before, um, but I didn't do any baby clothes with it because this was a, like the first dye bath I did three years ago. Just did some t-shirts and some rags, but uh, I realized that I haven't done any onesies with our hemlock trees outside. Um, and we are pole sawing. These are so wet, they're so easy to, to draw. Yeah, I'm gonna take this too and die with them. You are. I finally did one and I just love the color so much. It's so earth tony and it just looks, I don't even know how to describe the color. It's just really pretty. I love the way it looks. So I'm definitely gonna be doing more with hemlock bark. And I think it's one of my best or my favorite smelling dyes, which you're not really supposed to like be smelling your dyes, but sometimes you get a whiff here and there. Uh, you really don't want to like go into the pot and dye it because it is very strong, but this one does smell really good. <laughs> so this is hemlock bark, and then I also did, you know, the hemlock yarn for my baby blanket. So I finally got the chance to experiment with indigo. I've been really wanting to get blue for my baby blanket because I noticed that I have a lot of purples and pinks and it would be nice to actually bring out some blue since we don't know the sex of the baby. I knew that indigo you can get some very beautiful blues. I'm gonna have to make a whole separate video for indigo because it's kind of in its own category. I'm still learning, I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm very, very new to indigo. I've only dyed with it once, but I'm obsessed. I love the results and I cannot wait to continue learning and experimenting with indigo. There's so many ways of making an indigo dye bath or a vat is what they call it. So I did dye a couple of things with indigo. I just did two onesies so far. And I mean, I was speechless. It's so pretty and it's so much fun. But again, I'm gonna have to do how I've been dyeing with indigo. I mean, I, like I said, I've only been, I've only done it once. So the more I practice with it or maybe the next dye bath that I do, I'll film it. The first dye bath that I did is with henna. Um, instead of the other chemical stuff that people use to bring out the dye. Anyway, I'm still learning all the terminology and all of depths in this stuff and there's just, there's so much to it. I don't even, I wouldn't even know how to begin to talk about it. Of course, I also did, you know, stuff for my baby blanket. So I did a whole bunch of different blues and I did a tea towel. I mean, look at that, it's so, Pretty. Oh, it just turned out so good. It looks like a she shell in the middle and it just spirals out. Um, I cannot wait to experiment more <laughs> with Intico, honestly. I only have a couple of onesies left. I didn't want to do a whole bunch because one of the things I wanted to do for my baby shower is have some of my family members also make me some onesies. So for my baby shower, I'm gonna have different dye baths going um, and they can tie dye them, they can just throw them in there. But I thought that would be really fun to have family members dye uh, onesies for the baby. So I'm trying to not go overboard. <laughs> I'm having way too much fun dyeing. <laughs> so I've also been doing just some socks, you know, it's just so I can have some, just some more blank canvases to do. Um, I haven't been labeling these, I mean, Obviously this is probably turmeric and salalberry, but they're just little cute socks. Here's some of my yarn. We have alder bark, which is that, it's kind of like a salmon pink. Uh, purple cabbage, which you guys seen. And then this is log wood, which I found through a website. They sell different types of dye. So I got, that's where I got all my indigo supplies. I got also log wood and Brazil wood, which gave me that red that I was looking for, which turned out really cool. Still experimenting with this. This was new for me. So I didn't do any onesies. I just did the yarn just to see how it would turn out. And then I did this one yesterday because Jake was soaking black beans um, to make soup. 
and if you soak black beans if you ever drain the water out you can see that it's like a really pretty blue it's like really vibrant you can save that water and just throw some used t-shirts in there that you want to dye and it will actually dye them very nicely um, this I did manipulate a little bit with iron water because I really wanted the color to pop we got a really pretty blue purple like it's purple and it has like the blue streaks in it um, so that's just with the, the black beans that we had for dinner the other night is now here and it's going to be a part of our baby blanket. It's quite toasty sitting in front of the fire this song, but this video was so much fun to make. I'm having a blast dying with plants and I know this is only the beginning. There's so much more at my fingertips of plants and dying to explore. I'm learning so much and I love it and I love being able to dye my own clothes. Um, knowing that they either come from the forest or they're coming from our kitchen and before I get going I'm gonna show you two things. I'm gonna show you the baby bump and The dogs here are curled up by my feet, which you guys can't see they're just like right here and it's super adorable So I'm gonna show you guys the dogs and show you guys my little baby bump. Well, it's not little anymore <laughs> it's, it's growing Hopefully the lighting isn't too terrible, but here we are. I feel like the dress kind of shows me a little bit bigger than I am, but it's a little bit better. Wow. <laughs> so, so crazy to think. Um, I'm six months now and this is so bizarre. It feels like it's going by so fast. Okay, so I'm kind of tucked back here off to the side of the road in, there's Kai, more on kind of like the jungle and there's slawberries everywhere and I'm harvesting slawberries for my latest dye and I found something that I'm really excited about because it's kind of early in the season but it's not. Um, let me just show you. So here in the thick of slawberries and look at what I found. Oh, yes. Hello, beauty. Some chanterelles. All right. It's time.
guys so much for watching. Yeah, I hope this inspires some of you guys out there to create your own dyes and experiment with things. Um, I'd love to hear how that goes. It's just a lot of fun, <laughs> as I've mentioned before. If you are new here, please subscribe. Leave an awesome comment down below and hit that thumbs up button and I will see you guys next time. Bye.